Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the show. I just flew in from Ohio, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> we hope you enjoy our animation as we delve deeply into the world of modulations to distant keys. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Local trains departing for Vienna at 1400 hours. Oh, I've got plenty of time. I can start this section on substitutions and regions. Bonjour, bienvenue à Paris. What? How did I get here? There's no way I could have been transported here so quickly. This type of travel is just not possible. Au contraire, mon frère. Excuse me? You may want to consult your local physicist regarding that one, but this type of distant travel is definitely possible in music. You should know, you're reading a book written entirely on the subject. I've just started, and it's a bit confusing. Perhaps you could help me better understand? Gladly. This type of remote travel to which I'm referring are modulations based on Schoenberg's chart of the regions. There's a few things we must understand before we explain construction of the chart. Take a look at this. This is a major scale and a minor scale sharing the same key signature but not the same tonic, hence a different tonal center. If the two keys are parallel, they share the same tonic or tonal center, but have different key signatures. The process of changing tonal centers is known as modulation. This is what we will be focusing on. Let's note, moving to a parallel key is not considered a modulation. It's observed as a modal shift and it will be integral to our modulation to a distant key. Now let's begin constructing Schoenberg's chart of the regions. I get to put my theory to work? Oh boy, that's where I'm a Viking! First, we start with our tonal center. Schoenberg maintained that this could be major or minor, but for our ease of understanding, we'll stick to major. We could also start with any key, but again, we'll start simply with the key of C. Next, we'll use the circle of fifths to create our initial vertical line, moving up a fifth and down a fifth until we've exhausted the circle. To the left of each tonality, we'll place the relative minor key, and to the right, we'll place the parallel minor key. Avoid using theoretical keys. These will be satisfied by enharmonic respelling at another point in the chart. Continue this process until our tonal center will be, among other places, in the bottom left and top right corners. Now our chart is complete. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the chart in action. The chart of the regions can be used as a tool to navigate smoothly between distantly related keys by using closely related keys as stepping stones. For example, to modulate smoothly from C major to the distant key of F sharp major, which is only one common tone, we can modulate from C major of F sharp major. Each of these individual steps is easy to achieve because they share additional common tones. Then together, they can quickly link the two distant keys just as in rail travel. Wow, this new way of modulating really blows my skirt up. A few tips to remember to ease into these transitions. Good part leading will always be of great assistance. This refers especially to the main voices, the outer voices, soprano and bass. 
difficult and even unmelodious progressions will be better hidden in the middle voices. Chromatic and quasi-diatonic progressions can soften many a harsh connection by their melodious qualities. The outer voices are also helpful in introducing substitutes, transformations, and vagrant chords, if their directional tendencies are carefully observed. The final cadence must not be too short, especially if it has been preceded by remote deviations 